Just how accurately can you predict the draw in football? And more importantly, how can you do it quickly? In this video, we're gonna get straight into detail answering both of those questions. By the end, you'll know exactly where to look first and how to anticipate a draw in football. I'll be putting particular emphasis on how and why you need to focus on specific match relative information, because depending on the teams and league, the likelihood of a draw will change. In the Premier League, teams consistently win around 46% of all home games, and the draw occurs around 27% of the time. Whereas in the lower leagues, the draw averages are considerably lower. But there's a better way to consistently predict a draw other than just looking at stats, as I'll explain in a minute. But before I do, I just want to take 10 seconds out to let you know about a prize draw we're doing in this video. Recently, we've given away a lot of cash on the channel and previous uploads. This time around, we're giving away 10 Geeks Toy licenses so that you can trade the football efficiently. Winners selected from the comments shortly. First, it's important to say that not every draw is predictable. So keeping the powder dry is important when you're anything less than confident. However, some football matches are extremely predictable when it comes to the draw, like these two, as I'll explain now. But first, you want to ask yourself, what is the intent for both teams. Do they desperately need the win? Will the draw suffice? And how's the result going to affect future fixtures? Knowing their agenda puts you in a stronger position to predict the draw before we even look at things like expected goals. Um, a famous example of this would be Manchester United when they won the league back in 2011. Some of you may even remember it. Uh, they're playing away to Blackburn Rovers, who are just a few points away from relegation themselves. Uh, around 20 minutes before the end of the game, Rooney scored via uh, a penalty, making it an equaliser. From that point onwards, it became the dullest game ever, as neither team had an incentive to score. Man United won the league and Blackburn was safe, so both teams were happy with the draw. Uh, another example was quite controversial at the time, was back when Denmark and Sweden both needed a 2-0 draw to qualify from their groups during the Euros. Uh, there were 31 shots in that match, but once the scoreline hit 2 all both teams were content. From that point onwards, the draw was more than predictable. But beyond fundamental characteristics like this, it's more important to look at historical data patterns uh, in previous matches because applying them to the present can be a good indicator when you're trying to predict a draw. Typically, the people that follow this channel are quite shrewd, so I'll get straight to the key points, which are expected goals, possession, the time frames, and how money has changed the game over time. But before I do, if this video is of interest, please consider giving it a quick thumbs up. It helps us improve visibility and gives us an idea on which content was received best. So let's tackle these four points one by one with some actionable tips and pointers you can go away and check out straight away. I should probably also mention we uploaded a very popular video last week outlining specifics of free bet football betting strategies that work. Uh, there'll be a link in the description below and also in the end screen of this video if you haven't seen that one before, so check it out, it's highly recommended. So what are we looking for specifically in terms of predicting the draw? Now it's an obvious and logical place to start, but we're going to look for matches where they're less tense on pitch, there's going to be less attacking and more possession of the ball. You want to think about it strategically as though you're a football manager, what the overall intent is and what you know, you'd know you like the game's outcome to be as a manager because this is often reflected on pitch. Thinking about it from a betting perspective is slightly different because it's easier to predict a draw for a small section of time and then cash out those bets rather than predicting the entire match's outcome, although you know that can be possible too. So what sort of matches do you want to look at? You want to look at matches where you know neither team can afford to lose, particularly if you're focusing on the first half of a football match. Big matches like um, cup finals and that kind of stuff usually start really slow. They're very defensive on pitch, and therefore you know there's a draw within the first half. Uh, you want to look at teams that are evenly matched. Again, very logical, particularly if they're low-scoring teams over a period of time. We'll look at expected goals and stuff like that in a moment and how you can use that to your advantage. But you really want to get deep and hunt on those game-specific clues uh, before the match even starts. So when there's evenly balanced odds between two teams in the match odds market, that obviously uh, identifies the fact that in terms of probability, the market thinks they're evenly matched and therefore there's, there's a higher chance of there being a draw. Also look at things like the 2.5 goals market. 
Now, if it's under 2.0 or lower, then the market is telling us there's a 50% chance of there being 2.5 goals. Obviously, there can't be 0.5 goal in a football match. So that means there's going to be more than two goals. Uh, if the price on 2.5 goals is under 1.6, then it's telling us there's a 62.5% chance of there being less than 2.5 goals. So just bear that in mind before the start. It's a good way of identifying low scoring matches. The price on the 2.5 goals market is usually around about evens uh, because uh, typically, you know, depending on the league, this is there's around about 2.5 goals in each football match on average. The correct score markets can also be a strong clue when identifying low scoring matches um, and low goal line predictions because obviously they will be a short price. So you're looking at games where it's like one all draw, one nil, nil nil, and they'll have very short odds. So that will highlight the fact that there's likely to be a low amount of goals. Now, once the match actually starts, because you know relevant information is the most important information, then it's Good to see, you know, is this match behaving as expected? Uh, more on that in a moment with the expected goals. But the more knowledge available to you, the more chance of getting a correct prediction for a draw. Don't bother looking at the league table unless you're sort of like 10 matches into the season is also a good thing too because you can have that variance of results early on which can be quite misleading. It's always important to remember that opinion subjective and we want to focus solely on data and numbers to make up our opinion. So on to the expected goals. So first of all, if you didn't know, expected goals is an analytical database that measures the probability of goals in a football match based on you know large historical data sets. So you can't really argue this. The, this is fact. It's important because it's an accurate measurement, free from personal bias, which is something you see a lot in football. Uh, it's just data and it is quite definable. So in short, it's probably the best benchmark that we've got when it comes to deciding if a team are you know on form or, perf or performing on form uh, or, or not because you you know, quite honestly, the numbers don't lie. InfoGoal is a site that I would recommend to use for statistics and data. They've got a decent little app there as well with an XG feature, uh, which is great to pull up if once the game's on. So what you need to look for is low expected goals, quite obviously, because the lower expected goals, the higher a chance of the draw. So 0-0, nil, 1-0 nil, nil are often the most reliable draw in score lines because the more goals there are, the harder it becomes to actually predict a draw. Like predicting a, a three or draw is, you know, very, very hard. So just quickly, as per the intro, another giveaway. Having given away nearly 500 quid cash already this month, we're doing 10 free month subscriptions to the Geeks Toy Trading software this time. The process is simple. I go to the recent comments on the channel, filter out non-subscribers, and pick the winners at random. Here are your 10 winners on the screen this time around. If you haven't got back to us already, please do. The third point being possession. Now, I believe in being direct without the waffle, so I'm gonna, not going to go on and waste your time on this one, uh, going through possession step by step. Basically, you're looking for similar traits that we've all just been talking about within expected goals and the previous problem as such, the only difference being with possession stats. So the more possession there is for a team with little scoring intent, the better. It doesn't necessarily matter if one team's holding possession more, so long as they aren't converting that into serious goal attempts. It's sometimes better if one team is hogging the ball but can't translate that to shots on target. Now the last two points, time frames and how money has changed the game. So going on to time frames, Prediction is a funny thing, but information is absolutely paramount. Now, info is time relative, so it's far easier to predict a draw nearer to the off and once it's just started in play for a segment of time, as I previously said, rather than predicting the you know the, the score over the whole 90 minutes. Presuming you want to predict it for betting purposes, it's important to remember that you can cash out your bets on pretty much any platform. It's better to use an exchange, obviously, platforms like Betfair, Markets, etc., etc., because there's lower commission and you get better odds. Now, every strategy has its place, and time is a missing piece to the puzzle a lot of the time. From a betting perspective, it's not what you've got, it's how you use it. So focus hard on linking several indicators together and then ask yourself when and where would be the best time to have a bet open before cashing out in play. That's usually the best way to approach things. So for example, if you were to find um, a football match where there's low expected goals in the match, maybe you'll find that from the unders overs market or the correct score market, and then you see that one team in particular has a lower expected goals rating than the other, uh, and they've been performing in line with that expected goals rating recently, and the same team 
team has some solid possession stats. Now this is obviously an ideal opportunity, but then the match starts and you can see that they are holding possession of the ball. They can't necessarily afford to lose the match for whatever reason. I think in this sort of situation, it'd be fair to say that the first half is certainly going to be tighter. Uh, there's going to be easy opportunity to, to place an opening bet and then place a cash out bet or trade for a small amount and lock in a profit without too much risk. Uh, the confirming signals on pitch in line with what you expected to see is the main thing that I'm trying to highlight here in conjunction with the low expected goals, etc, etc. So consider setting yourself a maximum time frame when and where you expect this to happen um, and that you predict that it's to maintain a draw throughout the match if you like. Uh, typically the first half's less frantic and if it's a, a high pressure game then the teams can't afford to lose then they start slower anyway. So focus on those areas. And last of all, how money has changed the game. So over the last decade, uh, outside investments come into football a lot more. You see teams like Man City in the Premier League, uh, they've got a stronger correlation, but there's more, basically there's more draws as time has come into the game. And the higher the quality means the less variance in probability. So evenly matched teams, more consistent players means the draw is more likely, in particular on low scoring matches. Top tier football has become less competitive over the last 10 years. And you look at the numbers, the draw statistics say that it's actually increased 3%, so there's more chance of a draw than ever before. And the reason for it is that the money that's been poured into the game has brought more stability on pitch. And stability is crucial if you want to predict the draw and consistently win your bets. As I previously said, last week we uploaded three strategies to this channel to show you how winning's done. Check it out by clicking here, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for future uploads.